Hello, and welcome to an in-depth look into the resources and expectations for criminal justice research. My name is Erin McCoy, and I'm the criminal justice librarian here at Massasoit. We are going to work through the general criminal justice libguide, which should be sufficient for most of your research needs. Many of you can find a link to this libguide in your Canvas course on the left-hand side underneath where your modules are. There's a link to library resources, and many of your courses will connect directly to this guide. This guide is also easy to navigate to from the library homepage. You just click on the yellow button that says Course Guides. This first video introduces you to what is on this libguide and some basic search strategies. There's a follow-up video on advanced search strategies for criminal justice, which will be especially helpful for CJ students who have already gone through Introduction to Criminal Justice. We are going to start with searching the general database. This search box here on the LibGuide searches all library con content, from videos to ebooks to magazine and journal articles. The search box operates using keywords, which generally would be the primary word or combination of words that describe your question. For example, if I am doing my paper on the use of body cameras and police departments, I would type in body cameras and police. When you're off campus, you will be asked to log in, which of course everyone is on off campus right now, and this is your regular Massasoit username and password. From here, I want to make sure to click on peer reviewed here on the left in order to ensure that my results are only peer reviewed scholarly articles written by experts in the field. You can also do this from the front page where you first type in your search terms. If you are unsure about why scholarly articles are important, take a look at the page back on the LibGuide titled, What is a Scholarly Article? So there are a lot of search results here, which leaves me with a range of choices. Feel free to watch the short additional video on how to read your results from Discovery to get a better understanding of how this results page is organized. However, there are a few things to highlight that will help me decide what to do next in my search. The first question I want to ask myself is, what do my results tell me about my search terms? Are my results relevant or not to what I'm thinking about doing? Does that mean my terms are too broad or too narrow? Looking at the highlighted subjects underneath the article will help me answer that question. A second question to ask is how recent is the data? The results page tells me the date an article was published right underneath the article title. If I see an older article or a lot of older articles, I might want to resort my results by date newest, or I might want to use the slider here on the left hand side uh, if there's a requirement for when your article should be written. The final question to ask myself from this page is, do my results highlight a specific aspect of my topic I want to pursue further? One of these results, this first one, is about the effectiveness of body cameras in police departments. Two are about police officer perceptions of them. One is about how bias might still play a role in the wearing of body cameras. I may decide to focus on one aspect of police body cameras because of the results that I'm getting. Once I decide on an article to explore, I'll click on the, on the title and have access to the article. Again, I have some choices here. I can read this article now and take notes, or I can use the tools on the right-hand side to help me stay organized. I can save this article in my Google Drive. I can email it to myself, which will include the citation and a link back to the article. I can click this cite button and copy and paste the citation in a document that I have going uh, to keep track of my research. Either, either way, you will want to use some of these tools, and again, in order to help you stay organized. This is just a quick overview of how to search in Discovery. There are a couple of other videos that show you more of these tools in depth, and of course there is a part two to this video for more strategies to help you in criminal justice research. If you find that your search results are still too broad, 
go back to the LibGuide and search Criminal Justice Abstracts with full text. It is set up the same way as Discovery, but only searches criminal justice specific publications. For those of you struggling with even where to start on picking a research topic or question, you can scroll down to the bottom and look at some of these topic pages about the fields related to criminal justice, and that might give you some ideas. This profile box on the right is very important. It, this chat now button connects you with a real live librarian at the other, other end of the box. So if you have any questions while you're doing your research, you can chat with someone or instant message a librarian with your questions. You can also email me, Erin, or set up an appointment, a virtual appointment. The statistics tab is very important and also has a separate set of videos in order not to make this one too long. But every claim you make in a paper has to be backed up by numbers. Most of this data is compiled by federal, local, or state governments, and it is a lot to wade through. Depending on your topic, some data banks will be more helpful than others. And so I encourage you to take a look at those other videos as well. The Books and Videos tab links you to ebooks and streaming video that also go in depth into many criminal justice topics. You will find interviews and documentaries that highlight specific issues like prison overcrowding and mass incarceration, police brutality, juvenile justice, and more. The final tab on the LibGuide is a brief introduction to your APA citations. Every database you use has a citation tool in it, so don't leave a database without getting your citations in some form, either by copying and pasting it, saving it, or emailing it to yourself. There is a more robust citation guide that you can link to here on the right, and that can help you get your citations in order. And there's also a link to the Writing Center and where you can set up an appointment or send your paper in for some edits or some advice on how to manage your citations and organize your paper. Hopefully you feel a little more secure in researching for criminal justice. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and contact me directly or the library in general and have a good day.